About 71% of the Earth's surface is covered in water, and we can harness some of it to create energy. The two most common water energy technologies are hydropower and tidal power. Hydropower is electrical energy derived from falling or running water. The movement of the water turns the blades of a turbine, which is connected to a generator, which produces electricity. Hydropower is the most commonly used form of renewable energy. Tidal power converts the natural rise and fall of the tides into electricity using a variety of technologies, including tidal fences, barrages, and turbines. Additionally, wave power can be harnessed to capture energy from waves on the surface of the ocean using a special buoy. Energy from water is considered a renewable energy resource because it uses the Earth's water cycle and gravitational pull to generate electricity. It also does not directly emit greenhouse gas emissions or air pollutants. However, depending on the water energy technology, negative environmental land use impacts can be an issue. Water is also heavily used in energy production processes. For example, water is used in power generation to generate steam, cool nuclear thermal plants, extract and process fossil fuels, and to irrigate biofuel crops. Why does altitude cause headache? Since the air is thinner, there's less oxygen in the blood, so blood flow to the brain increases. The extra blood can cause blood vessels to swell and tissues to press on the sensitive membrane that surrounds the brain, resulting in a headache. But not everyone develops a headache at moderately high altitudes, partly because the low oxygen content of the air causes the climber to breathe more often, forcing carbon dioxide out of the blood. The body reacts to the lowered carbon dioxide content of the blood by decreasing blood flow to the brain. An individual's susceptibility to altitude-induced headache, as well as the severity of the headache, depends on whether the overall blood flow to the brain increases or decreases. At high altitudes, usually over 10,000 feet, an unrelated condition known as high-altitude cerebral edema, or HACE, can develop. HACE occurs when parts of the brain become waterlogged. Unlike altitude-induced headache, which occurs in over 90% of the people who ascend to 11,000 feet, HACE is a rare disorder, characterized by mental confusion, hallucinations, and a drunken stagger. Haste is almost always fatal if descent is not immediate. Electricity storage systems are the set of methods and technologies used to store electricity. The need for electricity storage is due to an imbalance in supply and demand on the electrical grid due primarily to an increase in renewable energy generation. These supply and demand discrepancies occur because renewables are intermittent meaning electricity isn't produced when the sun isn't shining or the wind isn't blowing, even though consumers still require electricity in these renewable downtimes. Currently, grids distribute electricity in real time, meaning electricity is being consistently produced to meet consumer demand. Electricity storage gives grid operators the flexibility to use electricity that otherwise would be wasted. This grid flexibility is highly sought after and has the potential to transform how we produce and consume electricity and is therefore being widely researched and tested. There are many different forms of electricity storage, the most common being battery, pumped hydro, compressed air, and flywheel. Currently the largest challenges in implementing electricity storage at the grid scale are the cost and the infancy of the technology. Steam is water that's heated to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Believe it or not, steam is invisible. You can see right through it. If you look closely at the end of your kettle's spout, you'll notice that the white stuff doesn't start right away. It begins billowing about a half inch away from the nozzle with clear gas in between. The clear gas is the actual steam. The billowy white stuff is what the steam turns into when it hits the drier, cooler air of your kitchen. Those white billows are in fact clouds, not steam. In many ways, they are identical to the clouds you can see in the sky. 
The white color comes from tiny liquid water droplets that have condensed from the steam. More accurately, these billows are a type of cloud called a mixing cloud. These can form when two separate air masses with different temperatures and different amounts of water in them mix together. In the case of your kettle, the hot steamy gas cools rapidly in the kitchen air and this sudden coolness is what makes some of the vapor condense. Mixing clouds are pretty common and they don't need to start with steam. You see mixing clouds when you see your breath on a cold winter day. You'll find them rising from a bowl of warm soup Wherever there's a mixing cloud, you can bet some warm, moist air is mixing with air that's cooler and drier. Natural gas is primarily methane, or CH4, with smaller quantities of other hydrocarbons. It was formed millions of years ago when dead organisms sunk to the bottom of the ocean and were buried under deposits of sedimentary rock. Subject to intense heat and pressure, these organisms underwent a transformation in which they were converted to gas over millions of years. Natural gas is found in underground rocks called reservoirs. The rocks have tiny spaces called pores that allow them to hold water, natural gas, and sometimes oil. The natural gas is trapped underground by impermeable rock called a cap rock and stays there until it is extracted. Natural gas can be categorized as dry or wet. Dry gas is essentially gas that contains mostly methane. Wet gas, on the other hand, contains compounds such as ethane and butane, in addition to methane. These natural gas liquids, or NGLs for short, can be separated and sold individually for various uses, such as in refrigerants and to produce products, like plastics. Conventional natural gas can be extracted through drilling wells. Unconventional forms of natural gas, like shale gas, tight gas, sour gas, and coal bed methane have specific extraction techniques. Natural gas can also be found in reservoirs with oil and is sometimes extracted alongside oil. This type of natural gas is called associated gas. <laughs>